Hey everybody, it's Righteous Freed. We're back here with another episode of the Russian Tank Buster Guide from me. This time featuring Rosalia. First, we're going to go into how to best use her with her incredible mobility and how she can single target strike. She can go up against just about anybody in 1v1s. She'll be able to make sure she doesn't take any damage from them and destroy a tank, leaving them vulnerable. Start off with, we're going to go over her talent. Glorious Faith, when entering battle with HP above 50%, which will be easy to keep. Attack and defense go up by 5, 10, 15, or 20% if you're at 6 star. So, definitely want her at 6 star, 5 star is playable. Once the season starts, I'm going to make try to get her in some action, show off how powerful she is and how how versatile she is to just get to where you need to be and how much map pressure she applies. And then before entering battle or after taking action, when there are other enemy when our enemies within a two ring range, you obtain faith, damage dealt increased by two, three, four, or five percent if at max rank six star, and damage taken is reduced by two, three, four, or five percent. You can stack it up to three times for a total amount of fifteen percent increased damage, fifteen percent reduced damage. Can never be dispelled so it becomes permanent this is going to become very easy and i'm going to show you how in one turn you'll be able to get three stacks before you ever fight an enemy this is going to be key to tank busting now her factions legion of glory pairs incredibly well with elwin not so much with the faction buff from ledin but because you, you won't really need it most of the time because you're going to be using chivalry as well in order to maintain mobility and get close the distance extremely fast. She's going to be able to get it's a super high mobility. With Elwin, his faction buff, when you're at 80% health or more, deal 20% increased damage. This, if you pair her with Elwin, very, very easy to tank bust because he his faction buff is a unique damage buff. So you can combo it with... Tiaris and Wyler, uh, Tiaris and Iris, that in order to just max out her damage potential. We then have the Princess Alliance. Um, Luna. It's These buffs are not going to be the best for just annihilating a tank, but if somebody lives, you can deal extra damage and leave them as low as possible with, with hers. Uh, Shafaniel is not really going to be the one that you want to use with her. If you don't want to run Chivalry and you instead want to run a different skill along with her 3C, you can do that as well in order to keep the stats up. But for the majority of time for this guide, we're going to be going with Chivalry. So Luna is great for Wind God Run, which we'll get into in just a little bit. But otherwise, not not the best faction buff for her. Right now, for faction buff, we only have Ares. You're not going to use Ares faction buff. When Hilda comes out, the, the new take in March... Her faction buff is increased single target abilities by 12% and counterattack damage by 12%. That's a unique buff as well, so if you don't have Elwin on your team but you have Hilda, that'll help you with tank busting as well. Alright, so we're going to go into her classes. Her two classes are going to be her holy class, as you've just seen, and cavalry. They have the same HP and attack at max rank and every, when everything is maxed out. One second, we're just going to take a look at Wikigrisser. So her max attack is 578 currently, and her max HP is 4,841. The only difference between the two classes for stat-wise is in Royal Knight, you have 274 defense and 297 magic defense. And in Holy, Silver Knight Commander, you're going to have 263 defense and 308 magic defense. Very slight difference. You're going to, in most cases, want to be in the Holy class so you're not countered by Lancers, which are going to be a big issue in the near future. Uh, her Swordsman class is pretty optional. Like It only gives you 80, plus 80 HP and 5 skill, and her boost one cost is not going to be used because of Sword of Command, or Sword of Protection, I mean, 
with its command range to give increased stats. So majority of the time you want holy, but if you feel like you are not going up against a bunch of lancers and in the near future we might be getting more infantry units, you then you might want to balance it out with Royal Knight, but this will keep if anybody plays a demon as well, especially if you go up against a Listel, you'll be able to easily annihilate her. For mastery stones, pretty basic. Attack, HP, defense for the armor and headwear. For weapons and accessory, attack, HP, and skill. For the arena stones, HP, attack, skill, crit chance, crit damage. You want to max out the potential to kill in one shot. She's going to be a kamikaze, just go in there, kill somebody. She has the ability to retreat, but with how deep she can go in by herself, she might most likely she's going to get killed. They might have to spend two units turns killing her, but she'll be able to take out the high priority target. Next for soldier choices, there are two main choices. We have Griffin Knight, which you'll go with most of the time if they're going to be playing Lancers. When soldier HP is above 80%, attack and defense increased by 30%. With her skills, they are able to get to pretty high attack, like over 1,700 when you are actively attacking. They, they are going to be the core unit since they don't have a weakness to anything but archers. And you're going to be able to maintain that plus 80% HP as well with chivalry constantly being in effect with sword of protection and being able to heal after battle next is heaven's guard this is for maximum damage if you for every block move before attacking plus 15 percent attack 45 percent at most you will get easily all, like just under 1900 soldier attack with all the buffs if they don't have a lancer you're just gonna it's gonna be even easier to kill them the other unit is going to be Templar Knight. If you're playing against a bunch of demons, which you most likely won't, you'll be able to get 45% no matter what when you're playing against them. But And they also have plus 45% magic defense. She's not going to be that defensive. She's most likely not going to be going to go, you know, going to be tanking against any mages. So this is going to be a very rare use. Other unit is going to be Holy Pegasus, but you do not have to worry that much about the amount of damage you're going to be taking on there because with your 3C, which I'll get into in just a moment, you're not going to have to worry too much about counter damage. So Griffin Knight, Heaven's Guard, make sure you get them maxed out and max out the training grounds. Guardian Cavalry is bad. Don't play it. Heavy Cavalry is just, there's no point when you have Heaven's Guard. Exorcist and Monk are not, oh no, Monk is the, the 2-1, so you're not going to use that. Exorcist is just not needed. Just not needed. It has no mobility. You're not going to be able to do what you want with her. For equipment choices, there's a couple. I am using Blue Star. That way, because of how much mobility she has, you can very easily move the three spaces beforehand. You're going to be able to just get in there, get the maximum 50% increase. You'll be able to easily get to 1900 and above that way you have maximum damage output other options do include Mimir's war axe that way you can gain more hero damage if an ally dies like if you're gonna be playing a mix box and you have like geezer off or you summon units and sacrifice them that'll get for extra hero damage balance blade is not an option she has no you don't want to use that with anything. She only has one AoE, and she's not meant to AoE normally, so that's not going to be worthwhile to you. You can use Seal Guardian if you don't want to, you know, have to have Blue Star. You want to always have the constant high attack. That is a viable option. If you want more crit chance, you can go Demon Slayer. That way you can just get that as much as possible, but you sacrifice HP, which staying a Really high is always important. Mjolnir, you can dispel buffs. Shouldn't need so this has niche uses, but you shouldn't need it that much. Again, blue star, seal guardian, back get that constant damage. Demon Slayer, if you want that increased crit chance.
for armors. Few options. I'm personally running Bloodway Magic Armor. That way, if somebody does attack her, I do have a small chance to survive with that, reduce that as much as possible. You can run Aeolus as well, in case you want, to, want a chance to survive ranged attacks, pot, roll at high defense like Magic Strike against her. Not gonna, most likely not gonna survive. They're gonna be able to just wipe you out. Giant's Resolve. If you want more chance of surviving against assassins, you're finding a lot of people are playing assassins all of a sudden. Reducing that crit chance can help. Flat plus 10% defense. For more damage in case they live by like, you know, a couple hundred points, Arcane Battle Garb. You can do that as well. Get in there. After battle, they live with like 200 HP. Pop. They don't have fixed damage immunity. And then you kill and retreat. That is a viable option, but with how you're going to be building your team, hopefully you don't need that. For headgear, Anias' helmet is an option, but and I might re-enchant this off of Sonya, because I might not be playing her, but you want Fury of Tear preferably. That's going to be your bread and butter, because it gives extra 10% damage before to your skills, and with Sword of Protection and Chivalry, you'll always be able to maintain that. Other headwear, if you don't have either of these two, Chief's Helmet's good for giving extra buffs to your, to your teammates, extra defense, reducing, making it so that your he teammates can't be heal blocked. It's always helpful. You can do Vampire Mask if you want to get really <laughs> want to get really lucky. 50% chance to reduce the enemy's defense by 20%. If you stay in range of them, you can definitely, you'll definitely have two chances with Sword of Protection and Chivalry. So that is an option to it. That way, if their defense is lower, you can deal more damage that way. So, instead of Fury of Tear, you can try that. Uh, carbon Fiber is not for her. None of these other headwear are going to be good. If you want to be really spicy, you can do Tenyos for other buffs to your teammates, but better saved off on your, your mages and healers. Charon is another one. All damage received on the enemy by up to, I believe it is, 25% at max rank. I don't have one so at max rank anymore. So that is another option, but primarily Fury of Tear is what you want. That So once, hmm, if I get some more scrolls, I'm going to try to re-enchant this most likely, unless I get another one. For your accessory, there, there is Slayer's Emblem. Best option, gives you HP, attack, and extra attack if you're attacking flyers. That way you can make sure to put them in the ground. Judge Talisman, if you're attacking other holy units, gives you extra damage. Like if you go up against the Leaden, you can get that extra attack to put him in the ground. That way you don't have to worry about him. Lone Star Amulet is actually decent because she's going to be alone most of the time, and that gives you an extra regular 2% attack and 10% and extra defense. That way you can make sure... If you are not using your 3C on an enemy, that it can still kill them, and you'll survive. You don't really need Overlord Badge, not Sorceress Metal, because it doesn't give you the attack you need. If you don't have Slayer's Emblem or Judge Talisman, Winged Shin Guards are decent for plus 8% extra attack. But primarily, uh, you don't want to do this to... You don't you don't need flat crit because you just need more attack. Raw attack power is gonna be your primary focus. Everything else you can ignore. For enchants, you have two enchants you can use. Currently, I'm using Rough C because of how much movement she has. Give her that extra 10% attack and damage reduced when attacking by 15%. With her talent at max rank, she'll have 30% innate reduced damage when attacking. If you put attack blessing on her from Tiaris, that'll be a total of 80% damage reduction while attacking. So even if you don't use your 3C to reduce the range, she'll just stay healthy. Alright, on to the skill selection. So, we're going to go off with what's going to be the most important, Sword of Protection. <laughs> kind of long. Active skill, apply sword protection to target terrain. Increases all stats, excluding HP, friendly units, on the terrain affected by command. So it's an aura within a one block range of it by 
When you have one stack of faith, her talent, it increases to two blocks for everybody in two blocks there. At three stacks, when you initiate battle, you heal for 20% of the damage dealt after there. That That is going to be key to keeping you at full health, including the damage reduction. This lasts for three turns on that specific tile, and when you have faith and you use the skill, you can then move three blocks and attack again. So this is key to getting in range and then killing your opponent. And when you cast this, none of your buffs lose their cooldown. Now, the best thing about this, the terrain effect can't be overridden. So Sage of the Trees, Licorice, they cannot, uh, Licorice, uh, Helena, they cannot override this specific cast. So enemy has Licorice, they use, you know, their 3C, they use any AoE or mass heal and then in order to get in range, you have to step on a tile with that dark, you know, the, the debuff on there. You can use that to override it so you don't take damage and don't take debuffs if you don't have chivalry active. Same thing with if you need to get in range and onto a specific tile, you can cast that over one of Sage of the Trees tile, and then not not all of your movement, movement is expended. All right. Next is Chivalry. We all know this. Cast it again. 30% attack, game blast. 30% damage reduced while attacking. And then Reinforcement. Heal 20% at the end of a turn for HP. This, after, also after casting, you'll be able to move an extra three spaces. This will be key as well to getting into range. Sword of, you can do Chivalry to get close to them. Sword of Protection. And then you can... Cast your 3C to kill them. All 3C is ultimate judgment. Attack an enemy unit dealing 1.6 damage. Before entering battle, apply sword of protection. So you get this whole thing again. Same thing. And until we get to this part. Before a battle, reduces the enemy unit's range by 1. So they're a melee unit. They now have a 0 range for the battle. And for the next until they end their next turn on that unit. So, melee units, boom, no attack. You don't have to worry about any damage from them. You're attacking an assassin like Zerida. They still can attack, but you're going to be taking reduced damage as well. So, you won't have to worry about that. Like you can, This will make sure nobody is able to kill you. You don't have to worry about taking damage and stay healthy for your talent to stay in effect. When you're in sort of protection range, after you use this ability, you can then also move another three spaces afterwards so you can retreat to safety. Everything else after this is the same with sort of protection. So standard combo is going to be get within two rings of them, chivalry, sort of protection, attack with ultimate judgment, and retreat. You'll have three, st three stacks at that point. You'll be able to maintain that for the rest of the game and kill everybody. Other abilities are Blast. You won't need this because you're going to be using Chivalry most of the time. Smash. With Ultimate Judgment, there's almost no reason to use this in PvP. There's uh, Ender. It's bad. Don't need it. Thousand Hooves. Eh, it has... It's a 1.7 damage as opposed to a 1.6, but it doesn't have anywhere near the utility to keep her from taking damage. Because the whole point is get in, kill somebody, take no damage, retreat. Hopefully they cannot kill you when they attack, because you're just going to have insane stats. Silver Spear is one of her other single target attacks. It's very similar to Javelin. when You, you can attack from range from two blocks or, or right up front. There's no damage reduction. When you're in Sword of Protection's range, you can then move three squares after there, and it deals extra damage to demons. So if you have a faction buff, if you have a lot of other movement units in there, like you have Tiaris, you have Akka, you have Imelda, you might, instead of doing this, you might want Silver Spear for extra mobility in order to poke, to poke and ki or kill other units after you kill the main target. Her last ability is Sanctified Wrath. Deals 0.3 AoE damage to all enemies within two blocks and dispels two buffs. If 
capture and sword protections range, you can move another three blocks afterwards. You're not going to be using this. You're not meant to AoE. It's not going to kill anybody. You're not an AoE physical mage. You're not doing that. The summarize, core, sword of protection, chivalry, ultimate judgment. Get in there, get three stacks, kill everybody. I'm going to show you very easily how to get in range and how to get the stacks. You're going to be using Reversal of Fate, General Geyer map with, for what's supposed to be Luna's map. All right, we're just going to put Imelda here. All right, so after, so basically after you start setting up, once you're in range, you, you can use Imelda, give her plus two movement with Queen's Whip. So seven movement, she'll be able to get into range of just about anybody. Yeah, like right here within two rings so right here and then all the way around here now it doesn't matter if there's one or more enemies in there because it only it only cares if there's at least one so you're only gonna get one stack right now so we cast it we get one stack of glorious faith then we can move again so we'll just move over here well chivalry still an enemy within two blocks so we're gonna gain another stack of faith Go over here, ultimate judgment, before battle, another glorious faith, so we got three. At five star, very easily with this setup, she has 1937 attack. Higher than what my Leon can currently get to. And if you notice, she took zero damage because of ultimate judgment. Get a clean kill, and then you'll be able to move out and retreat. Once Apex starts, I'm going to show you in there how it works out. It's going to... Not be as smooth as this. This is obviously just an example to show you how to get three stacks in one turn. Let's go back to the hero. She, in total, can get a very easy 13 total movement with, like, Imelda, Akka. They, they can provide plus two movement if somebody... If you get a Breeze buff from Tenyo's, if you... If you decide to run Breeze on her instead of Rough Sea, that can do it as well when you're setting up. Again, I prefer Rough Sea because it gives you that extra attack to make sure she can kill everybody. Now, for pairing with her, for team comps, Elwin and any class he's in is going to be good because of his faction buff, give her the extra 20% damage. Luna, because she has Wind God Realm, that's going to allow her to get closer to the enemy as much as possible. When Hilda comes out, she'll be good for her faction buff to get her 12% extra damage in case you don't get Elwin. Tiaris, Attack Blessing and Miracle. Attack Blessing plus 30% increased damage when attacking, 50% reduced damage. Iris, uh, Iris' Teleport to ignore terrain penalty will give her increased Added map control and mobility. Wyler, Desperate Prayer, plus 15% damage and 50% reduced damage. That way she takes nothing if she doesn't use her 3C. Deedlet. Oh, hold on, so we're just going to... Elwin with Faction Buff, Eternal Light. I'm sorry, it's plus 15%, not 20%. Mm. Plus 50% increased damage when your HP is above 80%. With her, that won't be a problem. Luna, when God Realm, two spaces negate, you know, unit unit penalties. So, I mean, move mobility penalties. Terrorist attack blessing. And then Iris teleport. 20% in increased damage, 20% reduced damage as well. No mobility penalties from terrain. And again, Wyler with high stakes to activate. And his this will give him Desperate Prayer. That way, keeps HP high before battle and takes and takes reduced damage. Dlit can 
with her accelerated aid, give her plus one mobility in case you don't you get banned out of your mobility buffers. You can also use Spirit Dancer. If she starts in Spirit Dancers or Elven Aura's rate or effect, she'll be able to bypass terrain at the start of her start of her movement. There's also Gospel in case you don't run Chivalry. Imelda, just showed you. Queen's Whip, she gives extra damage with her talent. Always helpful. With Sword of Protection, you can get into range and the buff cooldown will not will not go down as well. Very helpful if you have a faction buff with Queen's Whip and her talent and then like Elwyn's faction buff. That way you can just get in there, keep those buffs, deal maximum damage. Then we go to Estelle, Enduring Hope. Gives bunch of stat increases 12.66% to everything except for HP and mobility plus one for six turns that way she can have six movement always important there Akka sac wild power sacrifice your wolf plus two mobility plus 30% attack and int that way you can get in and out and then Matthew if you don't have some of the other ones there with sprint plus 20 percent attack and int plus one mobility and mobility your immune and mobility reduction and affects the silence or passives now that won't play too much with her but these are all the options for you to make a rush team that way you do not have to worry about getting into range you will always have somebody to buff the mobility now when playing roselia ban she, because of her 3C, there's a few less people she has to worry about. Landis is going to be one of them because he has the revive effect. You're, you don't want to face him ever because you're just meant to take on single target strikers. Like if you want to bring Heaven's Guard with all the Lancers there, he's going to bring Heavy Centurion or Trent Guards. Don't want to deal with that. Leaden is not going to so much be a problem because he only has one life unless he kills somebody with his Trial of Great trial of faith. You won't have to worry about that mostly because you can just 3C him. He has no range. Albedo will not be that much of a problem with her countering, but she does take a lot of reduced damage. At max rank, it's 70% reduced damage when you attack Albedo. So you really don't want to fight her because... I'm sorry, not 70%. It is 30% uh, reduced damage. Let's see. I'm sorry, max rank, 25% reduced damage when you attack her, but she can she will deal 70% increased counterattack damage. So you, you don't want to deal with her that much. She has Phalanx there to stop you. She has Crystal Boulders and Stone Colossus. She can very easily counter you if you use Heaven's Guard and just stay alive. So ban Obedo, ban Landius. You don't want to deal with those two. Leaden does have some damage reduction, but compared to Albedo, I don't know how much they're going to live here and albedo also has a revive with her 3c so you don't want to deal with that estelle is a minor one you don't want her giving mobility buffs and being tanky and living through anything as well sage of the tree with his light array and wave whisper they that applies the debuff to the field for any type of cavalry movement so that'll impede you from rushing to the enemy you don't want to deal with that get him out of the way Let's see, where's Licorice? Licorice, don't want to deal with her 3C. Dark Despair, when you're in the dark mode, it's going to apply the debuffs on, on the field. Every time you step on there, it's going to do you damage. Don't want to deal with that before battle. And then Assassins in general, you don't want to deal with. Because she, like she has an innate 15% damage reduction once she gets to... Three stacks of faith, but mainly she only reduces damage when actively attacking. So Zerida is going to be able to pop her. Omega is going to be able to pop her. Hie is going to be able to deal damage and pop her. Don't want to deal with that. So, in summary for Rosalia, 
max out that attack, max out that crit chance, max, get as much damage reduction on her as possible, so when you're going in and attacking anybody, you never have to worry about dying from their counterattack, and that way you can heal up after battle because you're always in range of Sword of Protection. This has really low. This has a three-round cooldown, which is really low for what it does, with constantly moving around and resetting your turns, and then with Ultimate Judgment applying that. Ultimate Judgment only has a five-turn cooldown. You're very easily going to be able to, using Sword of Protection and then Chivalry again, get that right back up and then into the action and killing somebody. So, want to build your team around mobility and just obliterating the enemy tank for an easy slow push to victory. I hope you all enjoyed this. and There will be more videos to come, and when Apex starts, you're going to see her in action. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like, and Righteous Freed out.